So you've heard about Torg, but you're not entirely sure how to go about creating an adventure because, well, it's different from everything else that we normally cover on this channel, isn't it? Wrong, it's not. And so this is how you create an adventure for Torg Eternity. Hello and welcome to today's episode. My name is Guy and we are talking Torg Eternity. Now if you have been following along in this series, this is the last in the installments that we're going to be doing before we do the one shot that I will be running with my players next week. Now I needed to design an adventure for this campaign and so I had a look around, I went through the book, and I'm going to take you on the journey that I went through. Now, last week, we referenced a few things that we needed to have in place in order for our players to be able to play the game. My players have all got a copy of the book, courtesy of Torg, and are going through it and asking all kinds of relevant questions, like what cosm are they going to explore, and those kinds of things. So that's happening on the down low in the background. Uh, what is happening in the foreground, of course, is me taking you through the adventure. Now, if you are going to watch the one-shot that will be available hopefully next week, don't continue watching this video because I will be taking you through what I have planned for this Torg event uh, in the rest of today's video. So it is, uh, it will be spoilers. There are spoilers, definitely spoilers. But first, this video is sponsored by Ulysses and Ulysses are the makers of Torg Eternity. It is uh, an absolute pleasure to go through Torg. I must admit, it's such a different system. It really is. Now, if you uh, want a discount on a Torg purchase, watch until the end of the video. There's a nice discount waiting for you there. And with that disclaimer out of the way, back. Okay, so how do we plan an adventure in Torg? What are the steps that we need to go through? Well, the core rulebook that uh, I just happen to have over here, the core rulebook uh, actually has an entire section, and you can see I've been using their wonderful tags, their bookmarks in the book, has an entire section on how to construct an adventure. And of course, it runs along similar lines to what I normally go through. So I had a think and I went, well, what did I like the most? What setting did I like the most in Torg? Now, I don't have the luxury of having a session zero with my players and seeing which areas kind of strike their imagination. So I thought, well, I want to do something that strikes my imagination. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, I fell in love with Tharkhold, the demon, techno-demon infested territories around Russia, because there's all kinds of wonderful Russian tropes just waiting to be explored. Now, the Russians are the first to admit that there's all kinds of Russian shenanigans going on all, all over the world, and we know this to be absolutely true. Kinda. Or is that more Russian propaganda telling us to think it's true, meanwhile it actually isn't true? Whatever. Who knows? Who cares? It's going to be a lot of fun to play in. And if anyone is from Russia, I um, I hope that my research does justice to the country. So there's a big word, research, right there. Anyway, uh, part of my preparations was I got the PDF of the Dungeon Master's screen that you can get for Torg. I put that together using glue and swearing. So I've got the... Um, the uh, DM screen all laid out, ready to go. I think that's definitely important, specifically because of the various tracks that we need to keep track of. Then I went through and said, right, we're going to go into Tharkhold. What can we do in Tharkhold? We need to introduce the players to the idea that Tharkhold is filled with techno demons, these weird mechanical things, and when you go to the back of the Torg Eternity rulebook uh, in the monsters section, as a matter of fact, which I just happen to have attached with this handy red stripe. So if you go to the Tharkhold uh, entries, you get things like Abomination, Ghouls, Thralls, and then Techno Demons. Now, each of them have got a bit of a description, so I kind of went through that and I went, oh, that's exciting, that's interesting. I'll save that one for last. And then I remembered the most terrifying thing to me about Tharkhold, or Tharkhold, I don't know how you would pronounce it specifically, uh, but the most terrifying thing for me is the fact that the Russians capitulated. They turned around and said, we will join your army of evil. We will join. This is good thing. Yeah, we will join you. So for me, that was an exciting thing, the idea of the turncoat. So that formed the basis of my inspiration behind the adventure that I designed. I went, well, 
I like the idea of this turncoat, so how can I use that? Well, we go to the stock standard process that I go through for everything. And just because it happens to be TORG doesn't mean that our five-step approach to creating an adventure doesn't work. So that's exactly what I did. So I've got that loaded up here. Like I said, spoilers, 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 but this is it. So I've filled it in. The players are going to start on a plane. Now, the big thing about Torg is that those cosms that have broken into the world, they have a radius, they have a reach. So major airlines or very specific types of airlines with very specific types of planes can fly over them without being affected by contradictions. So our players are going to be on one of these planes bound for North Alaska, having left Europe. The flight to get to North Alaska from Europe is basically over the very northern parts of Russia and Siberia and the like. So that's what they're going to be doing. They're going to start on that flight and... As they're busy going, in the first few moments, Indiana Jones style from, I believe it was Indiana Jones, um, and the, 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 oh, I've gone blank, I've gone blank, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, from that one, the pilot suddenly goes by and jumps out of the plane with the only parachute, leaving our players in a plane that's now going to go down and it's going to crash into Tharkold. So what I have done is I have very specifically highlighted the axioms for Tharkold. So magic is very low, social is actually pretty good, spirit is almost non-existent, so divine casters are going to have a really tough time, and tech is really high. So generally speaking, that's okay. The plane is not going to turn into a giant mechanical bird or into a, you know, um, flying dragon, for example. So things should stay pretty normal. It's the, it's the little ones, hopefully, that get changed. Now, I don't know what characters my players have chosen, so bear that in mind. So... The social is the pilot announces he's out, he's gone, goodbye, so long, farewell, and then the plane crashes into Russia. This is where research comes into hand. Now, my Russian history is not particularly good for any particular time period of history, other than that it was a giant presence and did a lot of wonderful and cool things in a very, very cold space. I know more about Russian music than I do of anything else. And um, so I went on to Google and I had a look around and I went, well, there's Moscow. So let's go north into the blasted lands, which are the lands of uh, that nuclear fallout. And so they're filled with... All sorts of wonderful things. Anyway, so I had a look around, and there I found the town of Rybinsk. Rybinsk, which is actually a spectacular reservoir. They 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 drowned whole cities. Not the people weren't in them at the time, but uh, whole sorts of towns are buried or or sunk or flooded, I suppose, by the Rybinsk Reservoir, which is a mega hydroelectric power scheme on the Volga River. Uh, nonetheless, Rybinsk has some very interesting bits and bobs to it, most particularly the Mother Volga statue, which is the statue, very white uh, marble sort of statue of a woman extending her hand for Mother Russia. She is uh, quite, quite spectacular. Now, you actually can't get to her on foot. She's on the uh, hydroelectric plant territory, which is strictly off limits to civilians. Um, so you have to get there by boat, which I thought was quite nice, nonetheless. So the plane crashes. As the plane's going down, I give myself some other notes that they need to do some skill checks, like I thought air vehicles would be appropriate, because that's what air vehicles is used for, planes and flying and that kind of thing. Computers, I thought, well, this plane has got computer stuff on it these days. It's a modern-day plane, so autopilot, auto anti-crash, all those kinds of things could be, could be there, and they could use that. Or the find skill, which is to look for something. It's like, look for the button that says eject or release oxygen or whatever. I mean, it's just to build up hype and to build up tension. So the plane is going to crash in the Rubinsk Reservoir, but as it does so, inflatable rafts are going to pop out of the sides of the planes, which they are supposed to do automatically, and the PCs will all climb onto this inflatable raft, which has a radio on board it, and the radio has got an incoming signal from someone who is saying, come on over this, yes, come in, come in, come in, please, please come in. Doing my worst Russian accent possible, uh, because I love doing that particular accent, Nonetheless, a radio on the, the plane or the inflatable, wherever they happen to be, says that if they can get to the Mother Volga statue, get there, you will be safe. 
So they head in that direction, presumably. I mean, they could, in theory, go, no, silly idea. We're going to spend the next six hours on this dinghy sailing north towards the Arctic Circle because Rybinsk Reservoir is massive. It is truly massive, a massive, massive, massive body of water. It's actually called Rybinsk Sea by the locals uh, because it is so, so big. Nonetheless, assumedly, they go to the Mother Volga statue where they're going to get attacked by thralls. And you can see there that I have put the page number in the book uh, that I need to turn to. Now, that's old habit. I have got my red tag, so I could just go straight there with the bookmark if I needed to. Nonetheless, they fight, they're fight. busy fighting the thralls. And halfway through the fight, Pietor, Peter, suddenly bursts into the scene and he helps destroy the thralls. I need him to do this for a very specific reason. He arrives just in the nick of time to save them from the thralls. He's sort of hiding in the statue somewhere. And uh, he helps fight them uh, from the uh, fight of the thralls. And he reveals, he reveals that he once, I once was a storm knight. But then I took a blast to the leg. And now I have to live here for fear of contradiction. Because his leg is all technomancy, cyber demon type of stuff. And if he goes into a lower axiom in terms of the tech value, which is pretty much all of them, he is going to suffer possibly contradictions. And that's not what he wants. So he is staying to help Russia and uh, fight the good fight, but here in the axiom. All they need to do is get to the safe house. Now, my idea for the Storm Knights and the Delphi Council, I spoke about this in last week's video, was that they needed to have like safe houses and handlers and that sort of thing. So I thought, well, Peter is going to be a perfect example of this. He can tell them as they're walking that Russia is not safe. When the government took uh, the seat on the council with the dukes of the demons, it did not make life for the rest of us easy. The demons still like to infect us with their technomancy and the Russian government doesn't push back too hard because they want their power. Life is tough. He can spin them whatever kind of yarn that I feel they need to be spun. And as they're about to get to the safe house, a techno demon attacks. Now, techno demons are gigantic creatures. They can fly, they can do all sorts of weird, wonderful things. It heavily wounds Pietor. But it then retreats unexpectedly. So when we look at our five steps, that was journey to plot, right? I will take you to the safe house, you'll be okay, you go home. Yes, all fine. But we then discover that it is not the actual plot in a next step. Why does the Techno Demon retreat unexpectedly? I'm hoping, and I'm fairly certain, that my players will be asking that question. They're all sharp little buttons. I think they're going to pick up on this very specific little act that I'm doing. It's very obvious, but then again, it's a one-shot. I don't have a lot of time. So they arrive at Pietr's safe house, and it has maps of Rybinsk and an audacious plan to destroy the Rybinsk hydroelectric power plant. Why? Because it will send a message to the people of Russia that we must never surrender, and resistance is not futile. But he can't do it on his own, because of his manky leg he needs help but the delphi council have gone no no we can't help you sorry it's not a priority target we don't think it's going to do anything uh, no we're not going to do it so there is that now that's a seed saying to the pcs all right here you go if you really want to do something cool and audacious you can help him destroy this hydroelectric plant if not i hear a helicopter the russians are coming for me i tell you um nonetheless so they're they're they're, they're they can either go and destroy the hydroelectric plant or they can leave Russia. He will organize an escape route. Uh, he will use the Trans-Siberian Railway. I don't actually think the Trans-Siberian Railway goes through Rabinsk. Um, but hey, this is slightly in the future, so maybe they did an extension line. Anyway, he's going to offer them either choice. They can choose. I like to give my players choices, even though it doesn't really matter. But don't tell them that. He also has in his little space several hundred thousands, well, several thousand dollars in counterfeit money in a large suitcase. He claims he's stolen it from the techno demons. Again, just building up. So obviously you know exactly what's going to happen now, right? Um, 
Nonetheless, Peter, we discover, has been infected by a thrall worm because I wanted to introduce the players to just how terrifying the technomancers are. Now, a thrall worm is basically this mechanical device that is a worm, and its entire purpose is simply to inject itself into a living human host and then to take over. And um, then you become this sort of thrallish type of beastie thing. It's absolutely, absolutely awful. Uh, awful. Uh, awful or awesome, depending on your perspective. So it tries to take over his brain, and that's going to require the PCs to have some kind of check. I said ev uh, evidence, analysis, find, first aid, medicine, or tracking. So they can kind of track where it is in the body and then maybe stab it through the skin. Something terrifying. Either way, when they decide whether they want to go on the Trans-Siberian Railway or blowing up the hydro plant, Peter will lead them to, to either direction, but slightly wounded, you know. Uh, you go ahead, I will be with you shortly. Just through that door, yeah, the one marked gas. Anyway, thralls are going to attack en masse. Um, these are actual, actual thralls that are uh, they're just psychopathic. This may be dropped. It may be dropped because this is a one-shot. So that can be dropped quite easily. Of course, when they arrive at the location, either location, it's not the Trans-Siberian Railway and it's not the hydro plant. It is a conversion lab where Peter brings these young, foolish storm knights. He brings them here and then converts them into raiders that work on behalf of the techno demons to spread the influence of the cosm of the techno demons out into the rest of the world. Mwahahaha. Yeah, everyone saw that coming a million miles away, but I thought it was a fun little turnabout and I think it's going to be a great moment. Uh, the, the players hopefully will have seen this coming a million miles away and will have set up something. Uh, and I like that. I like giving my players the opportunity of going, well, we see what you're doing. We see what you're doing. The counterfeit money. No, that's not. You didn't steal that from the techno demons. You making that, you bastard. You just happened to defeat the techno demon. The thrall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole things are set up, right? Absolutely fine. They then fight against Pietor the Mad, and ultimately they will win. And of course, then they will be wherever they're fighting. They will see that there is a trans-siberian train barreling through i've just watched snowpiercer the new tv series and so probably that's where it came from they'll be able to jump on that and then that will take them out to a safe zone if you like so there you are i thought that peter's arm which is a technological wonder uh, has a healing ability like a surgical instrument so it's a sort of like a medical scanner i think that could work quite nice and then three thousand dollars in counterfeit money uh, and then there's just a whole bunch of names which I needed. Now, if any of you are paying particular attention, I've used these names before, but I added on an Ovsky or an In or an Ov or an Eva. Um, some of them I didn't have to change at all. But uh, Kim Batrakov is quite a nice one. Wasanov, um, even just Harkin is quite fun. And then Yutakovsky. Yutakovsky and Gory, of course. So that's what I did. Yeah, so this is the adventure that I'm going to be running for them. Let's see how far they get. Like I said, these players, I have played with all of them before. And they're all very, very clued up on what's going on in terms of following plot and figuring out the solutions and things. But... They haven't played Talk Eternity before, so I want them to be comfortable with that. Like I said, we do have a Session Zero planned, where we're going to test out the rules and figure out how the cards work, because there are all those wonderful Destiny cards and Cosm cards, which will be in play here. So we're going to have a look at all of that kind of stuff, and then we will record our session, uh, the next session that happens after that. I don't foresee them changing their characters too much between Session Zero and Session One. I think Session Zero is literally just, okay, how do these rules actually work? It's one thing reading them, reading them in the book, Look, it's another than actually putting them into practice. So that's what I've come up with for my first foray into Tog Eternity. What do you think? Do you think this was a good choice? Should I have taken one of the uh, pre-written adventures from... Oh, I've got it down here. I've got it down here. Should I have taken one of the pre-written adventures from the Delphi Missions, the actual uh, Delphi expansion book that they released? I don't really do prescribed missions, you know me. I prefer to make them myself. So that's where that came from. Um, yeah, and let us know what you think down in the comments below. Now, if you want to support the channel, hit that like button or the subscribe button or share this video with friends of yours whom you think might want to 
play Torg Eternity, or who just want to see how to use the five-step uh, table, which is a it it is available. The five-step plan is available on our website. Uh, the five-step plan is available on our website, www.greatgamemaster.com. Look in the uh, Great Library uh, option, and you'll see some drop-downs in there, and then there's a folder in that, which, ha which has the five steps in there. So you can grab that free to use in your own games if you so choose. Now, I promised you that there was going to be a discount at the end of this video, and here it is. If you head on over to the uh, Torg uh, website, to the Ulysses website, you can see the link down here as well as in the description down below you will get a 10 percent discount if you use our our specific link um simply because they've affiliated with us so that is something that's quite cool if you want to try out the system it, it, it's a great system if you haven't been convinced in the last three videos this video is not going to convince you any less or more the only thing i can say is that it was fairly straightforward and going through it and i look forward to playing it so there we are i have had a lot of people in the comments previously saying that they have played torg and that they thoroughly enjoy it uh, i haven't had anyone say that they hated it to be perfectly honest with you i have tried to read all of the comments i really do uh, so there we are so a big thank you to ulysses spiel for allowing us to review torg eternity and for you for watching all of the videos on torg and of course to my wonderful patreons who support this channel in a myriad of ways and until next time i wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming <laughs>